In EddieHub, we wanted to start hosting our own private Vercel, private Heroku for multiple projects in the EddieHub and keep our costs down. Why? Well, because most of the time we host our projects on Vercel, which has been great. However, we do get some surprise billing, especially when we were running BioDrop. Here it's with the old name uh, Linkfree, but it's the same project. And people wanted to improve their statistics on their profile to show they've got more views. So they would write a small script and almost load test the application but then our monthly billing of $50 used to go up to $500,000 per month. And that was really painful for a project that didn't make us any money and started costing us quite a lot. And then it would also affect the cost on Mongo Atlas. So that really brought to my attention that I wanted to move our projects away from Vercel. I think if a project starts growing and making money, I'll probably move back to it because you don't mind paying for it when it is moving forwards and growing and making money. But when people just want to improve their stats where, you know, maybe I should just create a form field where people can go in and not just edit their bio in BioDrop, but they can edit the stats that they want to see on their, on their profile if that's what they really want, the stat vanity metrics. But that's a separate discussion. So what I did is I did some research into how to host uh, your own Heroku, your own Vercel in the cloud. And I wanted it to be an open source project. So I did find quite a few and some had UIs and some didn't and there were lots of pros and cons. And I actually settled on one called Cap Rover. And I've been using it, I think, for about a month now we've got a few projects that have moved over to it and it is pretty good however there's one thing i really don't like about it and that's why i think we will change again this is where i need your help i'd love to see what you've come across and what you recommend but we'll get to that at the end so let's get right to the beginning so i did that research i wanted to move away from vercel to avoid those kind of surprise costs and um, like i said i came across cat rover it's an open source project it had quite a lot of stars I know stars don't mean anything, but that's what we all look at first. And it looked like an active project. I did check, you know, like when was the last commit? I did check it was friendly and so forth and it looked really good. So I thought I have a play. So I went to their getting started guide and you can create a droplet straight away on DigitalOcean, but I created it on Sivo. I do a lot of collaborations with Sivo and they give me free credit for that as well, which is awesome. So I actually created a, a VM, four CPUs, eight gig of RAMs, 100 gig disk. Um, and I thought that should be enough to run say 10 or so containers haven't tested it, that was just a complete guess, but it should be pretty, pretty good. So I set this up, it was really quick. I said, create a new instance. I put a firewall on and just allowed SSH and HTTP and HTTPS. And then I carried on following the documentation. So it did talk about what version of Ubuntu and you need to install Docker because Cat Rover actually runs as a Docker instance and gives you some firewall configs. And I followed their quick start guide and got up and running really quickly. And one of my requirements for any of these open source tools to run our own private Heroku or Vercel was it needed to have SSL support. So therefore our apps could have HTTPS without me getting involved in that whole kind of, you know, DevOps space, because I just wanted it to work. I wanted to focus on the projects. And, and, and Cap Rover did that, so I was really, really happy. This is what it looks like when you've got your dashboard up and running. And like I said, just a few commands to get Cap Rover running, which was really straightforward and really good. So to get that running was really good. And um, here you can see I've got a Mongo database. You do have one-click apps and databases, which is uh, awesome. I deployed Edibot to this. We only have one in instance of Edibot because we don't want it to uh, respond multiple times in Discord because remember Edibot, a Discord bot, is not running as a HTTP request coming in that can be low bounce across the different containers. It is receiving web sockets coming in and so multiple containers will respond. So that's just one for that. But with the container registry, we did put four. We did try 10, but actually maxed out the load on the server. So that was quite interesting. So we've done four for this. But one thing that does kind of make me want to change from Cat Rover is the app goes down. It doesn't do rolling deployments. It says it does, but then when you read between the lines and you see some of the conversations, everyone seems to have a downtime for about 10 seconds. I get it for about 30 seconds. And so that's a bit scary. Maybe I should look at the, um, the logs or the statistics to see if something is going wrong. We do have monitoring and we can open net data. And 
and see what goes on. So we do have some spikes here and I wonder if that's during the deployment. We'll do a deployment in this video and we can have a look and, and check it out and see. But otherwise it has been pretty good, but that downtime is quite expensive because we deploy maybe, you know, multiple times a day. It could be five times a day and to have that downtime is, is quite harsh. At the moment, we only have like three users um, for this project um, and the bot isn't so busy because everyone in EndyHub is super inclusive. So those kind of words and, and reducing links so people don't spam and stuff doesn't happen that often. So the bot is kind of dormant and sleep most of the time and just wakes up when it needs to. But this project, I'm hoping it grows a bit more. It's a way I want creators to get paid for their content. And my clients ask me a lot of the time, can we pay creators in your niche? So I do connect them with people, but I want an easy way I can send them to a link and say, look, go find your creators that you want to pay in the niche, in the amount, and also their reach, because some creators have a smaller reach and that's what companies want. They want those uh, micro niches. And the other thing I did once installed Cap Rover is I did create a GitHub action to deploy straight from the release. And that was really straightforward. I literally copied and pasted that out of the Cap Rover docs. And I'll show that to you now. And it really was straightforward. All I had to do was create a secret for the Cap Rover server and one for the Cap Rover token, which Cap Rover gives me in the dashboard and put a the name of the Docker container. And so therefore it could deploy it. And that was it. And it just worked straight away out of the box. So that was really great. I had a really good feeling about it. So this PR, thank you so much, uh, Akash Coder for this. Um, it's to add the version number in the footer, which I think is important. We also need to add GitHub in there, but I'm going to now approve that because it looks good. They've put a screenshot, it looks good. Looks great, thank you. And we'll hit approve and we'll merge it and then you'll see what happens next. So we're gonna squash that. We're gonna add a feature and we'll say version number in footer. Okay, so we're gonna do that now. And then if we go to the actions tab, let's just check that that closed. Yes. Okay, so we're gonna to go to the actions tab and you'll see, first of all, it's going to create a release and then it's gonna create a container and push to the GitHub container registry and then it will do the deployment from that. And while that's happening, I will keep refreshing the website and you will see it will go down and have a 502 gateway error. So that is a little bit painful. I wish it kept a container running um, until another container was ready with a newer version to be available. So now it's publishing a Docker. You can see the, the release completed and now it's publishing a Docker and then we'll have a deploy next. So this is not affecting the, the web app at all. It all looks fine. And we can keep an eye on this as well. Oh, a bit of a spike there. As well, I say spike is to point two of the CPU, so actually it's not that much of a spike. What we probably want to look at is the load of the server. And the load is down here. It's probably a bit more interesting. Let's have a look. So still publishing the Docker, the app's still up and running. Not really affecting this too much, I don't think. These are these are look like spikes, but they I think they're pretty small in the grand scheme of things. And if you look at the the load, it's it's still 0.6. So I think we're doing okay for the moment. From historically, it does look like to publish a Docker takes about two minutes, 20 seconds. And before that, it was just over two minutes as well. So it says one minute ago, so hopefully any moment now, or now two minutes ago, it's done. One of the other things that I find quite interesting is to deploy to Cap Rover, we do get four GitHub Actions running, which I think is really strange considering the event is on the publish of the Docker. But I'm not gonna show you the action again. Go do take a look at the repo and see if you notice anything a bit strange about it. I think the event is the important part. The reason why I don't wanna look at it right now is I wanna keep refreshing the website and to see what happens. This is deployed. And so the action has finished and the website is still up. We don't see the version number at the bottom yet. So the new version hasn't appeared. And when we get the version number going forward, it'd be a lot easier to see when something has been deployed. So let's have a look at here. You can see low, look at the load really jumped up. Oh, so that's the CPU. The CPU has really jumped up to about 80 and you can see it is quite high. The load is climbing to deploy a container. And now you can see it's down 502 engine X error. And I keep refreshing it and it's down for about 30 seconds. I wonder if that is because the CPU is maxed out, which is strange to deploy a container. It's not building it. I think it is something to look into and you can see the CPU has definitely got a lot higher and hopefully the app's back, it's still not back yet. I mean, there's no other actions running, so that's all fine. But the load is climbing. I think this is why it might be down for a longer amount of time. The RAM isn't maxed out. It just really seems the CPU is taking the, the hit of this. Hopefully it comes back soon, not yet. 
Wow. Okay, so I'm glad we're debugging this live together, but it does look like it's the restriction on the server, but four cores, I think what we've got is, you know, I think pretty good to deploy four containers. Let's give that a refresh. It's now back up and running, and we do now have the version number, and it should match the release on GitHub. As you can see, the release was V0220, and that's what matched, matches here. So that's great. So we've definitely got the right version number and it's working. I didn't time it, but you can definitely see it was down during this period. So I might take a screenshot of that, share it in the Eddie Hub Discord and see if people get any ideas of how we can fix that and get around that. And if you do, let me know in the comments below. So our own private Heroku Vercel, I think is a pretty good idea. It will keep our cost stable, maybe down, but also stable, which is the important thing. There's no surprises to wake up with a big bill the next morning, but we need to make some improvements, I think. So there's still a bit more to do. I do also have another video where I actually spoke about using the databases, the managed database, in Sivo. So yes, in Cat Rover, I did show you that we do have a Mongo database, but I'm only doing that for Edibot because Edibot's database is almost like a cache. It just stores information temporarily and then deletes it out. So it's not a big deal if this database gets lost. And if we do move to another kind of private Heroku Vercel style, but to move them a container is a lot easier, but to move the database is a lot harder. So I actually wanted to have it so the database is somewhere else and therefore I can easily just move the apps around, but the database is stable and secure. So I don't want to manage that myself. So I'm using this on Sivo and I highly recommend doing it. It's been super stable and uh, made my life a lot easier. If you want to geek out with me, don't forget to come and geek out with me in the Eddie Hub Discord. I'm there every day. We're geeking about open source. I'll see you there. Link in the description below.